All right, IED, we're going to start talking about Activity 2.3.2. .2. This one is called Evaluating Materials. And in Activity 2.3.1, uh, we started measuring the properties of some materials. Now we're going to take those properties and we're going to analyze and see, uh, you know, what those properties are and, and how we can actually put them to use on a um, measurable scale so that we can actually see uh, how the property changes in, in a measurable manner. And that's probably the most important thing about this lesson is to think about the measurability of your property that you're dealing with. Because like, for example, if something is magnetic and you want to say, well, how magnetic is it? Because you've got like these really weak ceramic magnets that barely hold onto a refrigerator. Are they magnetic? Sure, absolutely. Uh, but then you've also got things like neodymium magnets that are like super huge and super strong. Uh, are they magnetic? Sure, absolutely. So how do you measure the uh, intensity of magnetism? You're going to need some way to measure that. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about physical properties of materials, mainly from a mechanical standpoint. And we're going to talk about like the intensity, like how to measure those things out and what they deal with. Um, so the first thing that we're going to go through is it's going to give you a uh, hypothetical situation. So whenever it talks about up here and it says comparing properties, there's an entire segment to read through in the Project Lead the Way uh, sheet. Uh, but the general rundown of what it's going to do is it's going to say, hey, um, you can look over the properties of engineering materials and you can see all of the different things uh, that we can actually measure out and we need to answer these questions. So which material properties did you investigate in 2.3.1? Uh, what units are used in measurement for each property? Uh, what does a higher value of the parameter mean to a material performance? What does a lower value mean? Uh, how might the material properties be used to distinguish the types of materials from each other such as metals, polymers, or composites? Uh, so, now you can review basic information about the types of materials on the product disassembly. So, these are questions that need to be answered. And the properties of engineering materials chart has an exhaustive list of several different things, uh, several different parameters that we use. So, you know, things like uh, density, that one is one of those that we covered in the previous lesson. Uh, the yield strength, which is given by the small letter, Greek letter sigma, and looks like sigma y. And, you know, you can read through every single one of these, uh, and each one of them is different, and each one of them can be measured by specifically looking at forces, uh, either measured in pounds or newtons, probably pounds for engineers, and we're going to look at them, and we're going to see how we can actually measure the difference between them. So density was a really easy one to do with the Greek, small Greek letter rho for the symbol notation for it. Um, notice how, you know, there's... A lot of Greek letters in here, so you're going to have to make sure that you become familiar uh, with the Greek letter rho and that you're familiar with the Greek letter sigma, the small Greek letter sigma. It looks like a little, uh, it looks like a letter or the number nine that got kicked over. So the the tensile strength is uh, how much you know it will deform if you try to like stretch it or compress it. Uh, and then there's a shear modulus, Young's modulus of elasticity. You're welcome to read through all of these. We did not look at all of these in the previous lesson. So you can just pick the ones that we actually looked through. This is a lot of information, and this is information that we go into more detail in as we continue to go through the course and as we continue to go through the years in second year engineering and third year engineering. So there's a whole lot of different other things uh, that we talk about. You don't have to know all of these instantly off the top of your head. All right, so um, then in the second part, it says read each of the scenarios in the presentation and record your response to the prompt on each slide and your justification in the table. So the first scenario that they give you uh, is a scenario about space gloves. So design better gloves for space. Obviously, space gloves are very different from garden gloves. You don't want to uh, you don't want to take space gloves and be like, I'm going to go prune my petunias. That's not really what's going to go uh, what's going to happen. Nor do you want to take garden gloves into space and be like, it's a vacuum. I'll be just fine. Neither one of those cases you want to use. It, like gloves have to be designed for space. So materials engineers are researching materials to use for the outer layer or thermal micrometeor garment of a space glove that will meet the following criteria uh, be lightweight and flexible insulate the wear and prevent heat loss shield the wear from harmful solar radiation uh, protect the wear from micrometeoroids which could puncture the glove and depressurize the spacesuit uh, micrometeoroids are basically just small very small rocks or pieces of debris up in space and you got to keep in mind if you're in orbit you're going around really fast so uh, you got to keep in mind that these things need to be 
very durable if something were to try to go up and hit up against it. All right, let's see if I can actually go to the next slide. There we go. Um, what did it ask? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't read the last paragraph. Uh, determine the material parameters the engineers should use to compare the different material options. So the parameters are all up in this uh, properties of engineering materials chart. You can look and pick parameters from that uh, from that sheet, and you can put them into uh, your response for this slide. Second slide is the uh, racing bicycle, and it says the designers of a competitive road racing bicycles are investigating materials choices for their new design. They would like to select a frame material that is lightweight, strong and impact resistant, corrosion resistant, low cost. Uh, using the table below, which material should the designer select and justify your decision? Uh, notice that these are not just like, oh, it's aluminum, because like this is a specific variant of aluminum or chromoly steel or carbon fiber. These are very specific materials that are being used here. Uh, look at the data and see which one would actually uh, work out. And let's see the next one. Living hinges maximize elastic flexure. Recall that living hin hinges are thin, flexible section material that are often molded in one piece uh, with two rigid pieces of material they connect. We did this something similar whenever we designed a case for our uh, earbuds or you know, designing a protective case, I think is what the lesson was actually called. But uh, we designed a specific type of box that would have this flexible section that you could just open and close. For the bottle shown, the cap and hinge are designed as one piece. Designers are looking for materials that make good living hinges. The best materials are the ones that bend to the smallest radius without failing. Using the index sigma y over e, the best materials have greater values. So you see this sigma y over e, these are two parameters that get used. And if you don't remember what they are, you can go back up into the properties of engineering materials chart and click on it and see uh, what those actually are. And you can see here that there is, here's capital E, this is the modulus of elasticity. And sigma y is right here. This is the yield strength. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be comparing the ratio, so sigma y divided by e, of the material. So if you could take the sigma y, which is the second column, and you divide it by the elasticity, this column, you're going to get a series of numbers. And notice that these numbers are different from each other. You're not really going to know uh, which one is the best one until you actually perform the calculations on them. So take, take a moment to actually run through those calculations and justify which one of those you think would have the best spot um, for the material for the living hinge. All right, and let's see. For the last part, it says uh, discuss your responses to each scenario with a partner. Uh, if you're at home, just do self-reflection and be sure to explain each of your re responses. So uh, here's your reflection. In addition to material properties, what other factors should be considered before you select a material? And uh, down at the bottom it says, you know, hey, uh, hey, by the way, here's some factors. Factors that an engineer should consider uh, before selecting a material include these down below. And that's going to do it for part one. Uh, I think we'll, uh, that's going to take enough time in class for a full hour. So virtual people, what I'm going to be looking for is I'm going to be looking for the answer to number one. Uh, the answer to the slides from number two. You can make a table like this or you can just type it out uh, one way or the other. And I'm also going to look for the reflection question down here for number three. So for this part, I want number one, number two, and number three. And that's what we're going to turn in. I hope you guys have a great day, and I'll talk to you later.